listening to you um, reminds me of why we are natural allies. Journalists write the first page of history, teachers cement it in stone. Um, the values that you put in with that. So this is, uh, well, let's say this morning I started in court. My, my first day of the cyber libel case was today. Uh, in 14 months, I've had starting in January 2018, in about 14 months, uh, at least 11 cases and investigations. Um, eight of these cases are now ongoing simultaneously. There is a week where I can spend four days in court. Um, in order to travel to come to you here, I've had to post $13,500 in bond in addition to the bail I've already posted. I won't... Um, I won't bore you with the details. This is the oxygen we breathe now. Um, I hope, well, I'm optimistic it will get better. But what I will show you is exactly why it's important to, Randy said it, we need to hold the line, right? And uh, I'll show you data, 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 because this is how we fight back. Um, let's pull it up, please. Uh, the Philippines is a cautionary tale for everyone because we're 100 million people. 97% of Filipinos on the internet are on Facebook. Facebook is our internet. And what's happened in all of our countries now as we've adopted social media, it's taken the, the distribution of news. It is now the world's largest distributor of news, but it's left behind the gatekeeping powers the journalists and news groups used to do. And this is the impact. Um, I'm also told, David told me that Tim Snyder came and spoke with you. Well, uh, this is what I said, and he said it in a much better way. I said, if you can make people believe lies or the facts, then you can control them. Tim was much more uh, prescriptive. If you want to rip the heart out of a democracy, you go after facts. That's what modern authoritarians do. Step one, you lie all the time. Step two, you say it's your opponents and the journalists who lie. Step three, everyone looks around and says, what's the truth? There is no truth. And then resistance is impossible and the game is over. If you have no facts, you can't have truth. Without truth, we can't have trust. If you have none of these, we have no public space and we have no democracy. This is an existential moment, not just for journalists, but for democracies. Sorry, I still get emotional every time I think about this. Um, I'm your example. This is May 2017. Let me show you how it works if you don't spend as much time as I do on social media. In the Philippines, Filipinos spend the most time on the internet globally. This is We Are Socialist, the stat. And we spend the most time, so we spend 10 hours a day on the internet. And we spend the most time on social media globally, three years in a row. We're a little petri dish, right? And if you think about Cambridge Analytica, for those in the United States, in the Cambridge Analytica scandal, the US had the most number of compromised accounts. The Philippines had the second num most number of compromised accounts. Okay, so this is what we went, we, I went through, we, Rappler. Um, it's bottom up, astroturfing of attacks, then top down, sandwiching when it comes out of the president's mouth. Right, so May 2017, um, they wanted to jail me. Hashtag arrest Maria Ressa. The propaganda machine started trying to trend it. I think the fact that I'm still here in front of you today shows it didn't trend and still hasn't trended. So here's what happened. Uh, we did a story that just looked at the, at the conversation between Presidents Duterte and Trump. And based on that, one of the content creators in the propaganda machine wrote this, Rappler just made the Philippines a legitimate target of North Korean nuclear missiles. How crazy and laughable, and yet, hashtag arrest Maria Ressa. Uh, this is the beginning. Then from there, it jumped to Twitter. 
and a campaign account. Normally what happens is in any one of our countries, there's a campaign, social media is used, and then it was, it's weaponized afterwards. It's what happened in the Philippines, it's what happened in the United States, so it isn't just about elections, folks. This one, ipatawag na yan sa Senado, call her to the Senate, hashtag arrest Maria Ressa. From there, it jumped to, I was called to the Senate a few months later, but see how like it foreshadows. The next one, it jumps to a real person. Um, I can smell an arrest and possible closure of Rappler.com, hashtag arrest Maria Ressa. This is May 25, 2017. I was arrested in February 13, 2019. From there, it went to a real person. This is the misogyny and the kind of sexist comments that, that are aimed at women in particular. Maybe Maria Ress's dream is to become the ultimate porn star in a gangbang scene. It's not, but it's there publicly on our Facebook account with more than almost four million uh, accounts. And then finally from there, it goes to here the sexist part. Me to the RP government, make sure Maria Ressa gets publicly raped to death when martial law expands to Luzon. It would bring joy in my heart. This last post was on Facebook and it was a graduating college student. And when I posted it on my account, his school contacted me immediately and you know wanted to talk to me, but I worry about our values, right? I worry. So, this was May of 2017. Um, this is how systematic it is. This is the timeline of attacks against not just individual reporters in the Philippines, but news groups in particular. And I will wager that it is, it is replicated in your countries. And you can see it from January 2015 all the way to April 2017. The elections in the Philippines were in May 2016, right? Uh, the two words I want you to look at are the one up top, bayaran, that means corrupt. It's used against all journalists in different parts of the world. And the one all the way at the bottom, bias. You can see that it is a fracture line of society and then it's repeatedly pounded a lie told a million times becomes fact. In our day and age, it's impossible to fight them one by one. You know, Churchill said, you know, uh, a lie gets its pants on before you can even put your shoes, before truth gets a chance to put its shoes on. You guys remember that better than I do. But here, we don't have a chance. Exponential pounding of a lie. And you can see words like prostitute. Prostitute is an attack against journalists that originated in the, United, in the United States. It traveled to the Philippines, it traveled to India, it traveled to South Africa, and women in particular are targeted. This is data. This is how we fought back in Rappler. Uh, I built a crude UX. We started taking the data that was in disinformation networks. And um, you can see all the way on your left, this is uh, the URLs, the websites that spread lies. The middle, those are Facebook pages that spread the links on the website. And then every time the average reposting goes above 10 times, it turns red. We came under attack, not just because we continued to do the impunity series, you know, at the UN now estimates that at least 27,000 people have been killed in a brutal drug war that began in July of 2016. But we were the first to really look at disinformation, at exponential lies, the propaganda machine. This is what it looked like when we published our very first series, a three-part series. This is in early October, end of September 2016. Look at how red it became. We became targeted. And I want you to look at the Facebook account of Sally Matai because she was attacking every single news group repeatedly. And you can see, this is for my social media team, you can see it is a cut and paste account. It takes one message and posts it in many different websites, as many as 
80 times on one website, and then it's posted in the campaign groups of Duterte and Marcos, the son of former dictator Ferdinand Marcos. He ran for vice president. And you can see this is systematic. We need to see the numbers. We need to see the data. We're being manipulated. It is insidious. And beyond that, let me talk again about the Philippines. When I, this is an attack in 2017 of our vice president. She's a woman, Lenny Robredo. She's not from the same party as President Duterte. She is the leader of the opposition in the Philippines. This attack, we just pulled out hashtag Lenny leaks. And it doesn't mean anything to you when it's like this, but when you put it in a network graph, it looks like this. And it exposes the extent of the first generation of the propaganda machine in 2016. You can see that there are three content creators, they're bloggers, we know who they are. Two out of three were actually admitted they work for government, right? And uh, what's fascinating about this, it is, it is so systematic that it's broken down, that the content they create is broken down by demographics. So SAS takes care of this pseudo-intellectual is what I would say, not really the thinking class. So that top 1% in Filipino society, uh, she also is a columnist for a newspaper. Thinking Pinoy takes care of the middle class. And the Mocha Uson blog is the mass base. She's a former singer-dancer who campaigned for President Duterte. This was the network that attacked our vice president. The digital exhaust is there. It is also the same network that attacks me, that attacks journalists. And the attacks are, well, more vicious than what I've shown you. Um, so this is the foundation of our information ecosystem. The lie from here, the attack on Lenny Robredo, jumped to media, traditional media. And this makes sense because the Manila Times, the big boss is, was appointed, was in charge, is still in charge of President Duterte's international public relations. SAS is a columnist in this newspaper. We're repeatedly attacked by this newspaper as well. But it's media in old ways, right? Then from there, it connects with state media. And what's so interesting is as of April 2017, our state media actually said that, you know, they work very closely with China and Russia. Uh, and when we did a story on the Philippine news agency inside Sputnik's offices, um, the photos were taken down immediately. Then finally, we closed the loop on that ecosystem by appointing the mass base account to actually head social media for the presidential palace. Um, she did this for several months and is no longer in that office after a series of hearings. But this is the information ecosystem in the Philippines. Social media has taken over the center of the public sphere. Traditional media who refuse to work together until today, you know, we don't share each other, but the propaganda machine discriminately shares each other. Let me show you what that looks like. Ah, before I go to, the, to what the information ecosystem looks like, let me talk about, you talked about History and facts, this is historical revisionism on social media, on Facebook in the Philippines. The historical revisionism of the Marcos years. And you can see how subtle it is in here. Uh, it's not even a post, it's all in the comments. They astroturf the comments, you know what I mean when I say that? You repeat it so often that fake grass looks real, right? So. Look here, it's astroturfing, and it's the same message by different fake accounts. Oh, Facebook also disclosed that the Philippines has a higher than average number of fake accounts. Dark part, my parents even say you can watch TV and news and even roam around the streets. And here I believe the dark narration and full twisting of this part of history during my elementary high school days. It wasn't all dark. The historians and maybe media made it all dark. Subtle. Now the Marcoses are back. It's really interesting to watch the transformation in front of your eyes. This is the network we have today. 
traditional media has been pushed outside. And I'm focusing you on this one because I was arrested. My first arrest, I was arrested. Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. Um, I posted bail eight times in three months so that I can be free, but I was still arrested twice in five weeks. February 13th was the first time I was, I was arrested for cyber, cyber libel. And you can see what they're doing in the information ecosystem. The pro-Duterte, pro-Marcos clusters are trying to create um, their own alternative realities. They don't actually ever share traditional news. Um, what they do is they're creating their own info wars, right? Um, that's at the red. And then the anti-Duterte clusters, anti-Duterte because um, they're traditional media, they share traditional media. So, for example, in today's hearing in the cyber libel case, traditional media shares, posts their stories, and then folks share it, but there's a simultaneous anti-story that's done by the red. Um, this is our information ecosystem today. And it's not in isolation. Uh, we found links between our propaganda machine and Russian disinformation, a direct link to the alt-right in Canada. Uh, and it's scary because information we've always known is power. Well, it's playing out in front of our eyes right now. Geopolitical power as well as power in each of our countries and the people who suffer are us. So. I will leave you, I mean, it's a lot of stuff to, to dump on you today, but I, this is my reality, and part of the reason, one of the things I'm working for is that local is global, and global is local. What happened in the Philippines was enabled by American social media platforms, decisions made outside of the Philippines. Um, having one social network be able to put together 2.7 billion accounts globally means these nation states' boundaries are gone, right? So that is both a crisis and an opportunity. I look at it as an opportunity. Here's our world today and what we need to do before I end. Um, I started with Tim Snyder's, if you want to rip the heart out of a democracy, you go after facts, right? Uh, in the Philippines, what's happened is that you combine all that with online and offline violence to create a climate of fear. Anyone who questions this brutal drug war supports those who fight for truth. They're attacked with the full force of the Philippine government. Weaponization, not just of social media, but of the law, in my case. Then you make them cautionary tales for anyone demanding truth. There's a cost for this. So what do we do? I speak to a lot of students in schools because it starts with each of us. You know this as teachers. Start with your area of influence. Demand accountability from power. Stand up against bullies. Report the lies. Although I did tell Facebook, you know if I reported I was getting 90 hate messages per hour. I, there's more than uh, 24 hours in a day just to report those lies. Anyway, tell your family and friends because courage spreads. We begin by taking care of what's in front of us. If I clear my area, it can meet up with your area. We must inspire courage. We need to hold the line. I'm gonna end with a one minute video Journalists are under attack, but we are not giving up. We're fighting back. And I want you to hear from other colleagues in the Philippines why they do what they do. Have you ever been harassed because of your work? Yes. Have you been threatened online? I oh. Have you been called biased? Yes. Have you been called stupid? Yes, plenty times, by idiots. Have you been called disrespectful? Yes. Have you been accused of corruption? Yes. Have you been called ugly as a response to any story? Yes. Have you been called fake news? Oh yeah, they always say I'm fake news. Anything that's critical is fake, right? Have you been accused of being an imperialist spy? 
Yes. Have you been accused of being a communist operative? Yes. Have you been accused of working for the CIA? Yes. Have you been sexually harassed as a journalist? Yes. Has your family been threatened, harassed, or alluded to? Yes, uh, it has. Uh, specifically, my daughter, when she died, uh, there were a lot of people who made fun of that. Have you been threatened with rape? Yes. Yes. No, not me, but my family. Have you been threatened with violence? Yes. Have you been threatened with death? Yes. Have you been told how you're going to be killed? Yes. Has the violence been described to you? Yeah, blow my head off uh, or bury me alive. What will stop you from reporting? Nothing. 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 Death? Did you have to kill me? Thank you.